Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's solve the radical equation 2 plus square root of 3x minus 5 equals 6. Okay, step number one, I want to isolate the radical. This is going to be kind of similar to the absolute value equations in that the first step is to isolate. Instead of the absolute value, I'm going to isolate the radical in this case. So that means I want to get rid of this 2 right here. So let's go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. So I end up with square root of 3x minus 5 equals 4. Now, I need to get the x by itself. So you can kind of think of it right now that the, the radical was kind of like a net over top of the 3x minus 5. I need to get rid of the net. In order to get rid of the net, I need to raise that both sides to the power of whatever the index is. In this case, the index is a 2. The opposite of a square root is a square. So I want to square both sides. Now, the reason I don't say square both sides in step number 2 is what happens if the index is a 3 or a 4? then I can't square both sides. I have to raise both sides to the power of 3. I have to cube both sides or raise both sides to the power of 4. So it just depends on what the index is as to what step number 2 is going to be. So I have square root of 3x minus 5 squared equals 4 squared. I'm going to square both sides. Okay, so when I square both sides, squaring the square root just gets rid of the radical. So that's going to end up giving me 3x minus 5. Okay, so think about it this way. If I have the square root of 3 squared, the square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Square root of 4 squared, the square root of 4 times square root of 4 is 4. We kind of went through that chant earlier on in the semester. I'm doing the same thing here. So 3x minus 5 equals, and don't forget to square this side. That's important. It's a common mistake to square the left-hand side and forget the right-hand side. So that's 16. Step number 3, finish solving the equation. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I have 3x equals 21, and divide by 3x equals 7. Step number 4, check for answers that don't work. So I want to just check it, make sure it works. 3 times 7, so now I'm putting it back into the original equation. So 3 times 7 is 21, 21 minus 5 is 16, squared of 16 is 4, 2 plus 4 is 6, it works. There's my final answer. Let's solve the equation square root of a plus 100 equals 25. First step, isolate the radical. It already is isolated, so I can go ahead and do step two. Raise both sides to the power of the index. Again, the index here is 2, so I'm going to square both sides. So I have the square root of a plus 100. Square it equals 25 squared. So when I square a square root, I just get rid of the radical. So on the left-hand side, I'm just left with a plus 100 equals 25 squared. 25 squared is 625. Uh, so now I'm just going to solve the equation. Solve for a. So subtract 100. So a equals 525. And I just want to make sure it works. So 525 plus 100 is 625. I'm just putting it into the original equation. Square root of 625 is 25. It works. There's my final answer. Hey, let's solve the equation cube root of y minus 7 equals 0. First step, isolate the radical, so that means we're going to add 7 to both sides. So I have the cube root of y equals 7. Now, in order to solve this one, I'm not going to square it because the index is a 3. So instead of squaring it, I'm going to cube both sides. So when I cube a cube root, just like when I square a square root, I just get rid of the radical, so I'm just left with y equals uh, 7 cubed is 343 and there's actually no equation to solve them or it's already solved for me so let's go ahead and plug it back in cube root of 343 is 7 7 minus 7 is 0 it works there's my final answer okay so I know what you're saying these problems are too easy well this is this is about as difficult as it gets I mean it can be more difficult but um, this is the hardest kind of problem that you're going to see Notice here I have two square roots on, on one on each side of the equal sign. So there's no way I can really isolate anything. If I divide by 2 on, on this side, well, the 2 just moves to the right-hand side, so I really don't isolate anything. So what I can do here is just actually start by squaring both sides. So I can go 2 square root of w squared equals square root of w plus 3 squared. Okay, so when I square a square root, I just end up with a radical. Okay, on the right-hand side, that's easy. I can just end up with uh, w plus 3. 
on the left hand side, I need to kind of take this in steps, in chunks. I'm going to square the 2, so 2 squared is going to give me 4. Now I'm going to square the square root of w, so the square root of w times the square root of w is w. Um, so now, now I just see a regular equation. Now I can just solve it like any old regular equation. I'm going to subtract w from both sides, so I end up with 3w equals 3, divide by 3w equals 1. Let's plug it back in just to make sure it works. Uh, Square root of 1, let's try the left-hand side first. Square root of 1 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. Now let's do the same thing to the right. 1 plus 3 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. I end up with 2 on both sides, so that means that this is my final answer.